All right, back out at the lease. My buddy John is not in the tractor today. He's actually behind the camera right now helping me out. But I've got some uh, T-posts here that he brought, and I've got a bunch of scrape sticks. We're going to go ahead and set those out and start off with a little bit of dough urine. But first, we got one more round of feed and mineral on some of these trail cameras. We're going to check those real fast. And then we're going to come back and we'll get to that. So we're out here in the center of this food plot. Now I've got my grizzly blind back over here on this tree line over here. And then I have a tree stand over here on this side. So north and basically north and south wind, different directions. A lot of bedding over here and big staging area, which is why I really like having that grizzly box blind on that side. Now what I'm gonna do with the scrape stick setup is because I wanna get it off of this edge. A lot of times, from years past, I've had a trail camera set up on a scrape on this edge, and the bucks will actually pop up out of this timber in various places, and they'll actually hug this edge and they go across. Well, if they do that, that's not good for me, especially if I'm in that box blind. I'm gonna be trying to shoot straight down out of it. And then same thing, if I'm over here in this tree stand, then I'm setting myself up for like a 55, 60 yard shot not saying it's not doable but why not bring them in a little bit closer if you can so by having this scrape stick set up in the center of this plot what I'm hoping is I can get them I can pull them off of this edge or if they're coming from that side I can pull them away what that should do is give me a broadside or a quartered away shot from both options depending on where I'm at so we're gonna get this thing set up now with the driver, give myself a little bit of a start. And if you've never used one of these things, it makes them noisy and a lot of fun. For what we're doing all right now come on in a little closer like i said this is a scrape stick and the way they've got this notch in the back you can actually screw this thing into um, a hard object you can actually use a strap if you want to run a strap around a post or something like that but they've also got the t-bar slot so we've got it set up where we can run that on there we're going to tighten that down. Okay. Now over here on this side, you've got your adjustment and you can actually change the angle on how you want that branch, how far out you want it to be. So we're going to set that for now. We'll loosen this up. We're going to go over here and find us a good branch, shove in here. Then we'll start making our mock scrape and put a little deer pee in the bottom of it. Grab a, grab a nice little branch. This one's kind of leafy. Okay. So now we've got our branch. I'm actually just gonna clean this one up a little bit. take some of the weight off of it, but also I just kind of want it big on the end. All right, that should work. Grabbed our branch over there on the tree line. Like I said, you can just use a, use a pruner, you can use hand saw or something like that, but you want to get something around one inch or maybe inch and a quarter thickness. And you're going to just shove it in here. Scrape sticks got this little tensioner on the side so you can actually tighten that in there to hold that branch in place and then again from here you can actually loosen this back up and you can lower that down to how you want it 
I like the bottom of those branches to be like four and a half, five foot, something like that. So just gonna tighten that one down. We're tight here. We actually have a little bit of give. There you go. Now we're gonna start scraping the bottom here and complete the whole mock scrape. Okay, so for me, I try to make as much visual as I possibly can. I like to scrape the ground, create that appearance of bare dirt. I'll actually snap a few branches overhead. And then I actually go ahead and put a little bit of deer pee or doe and estrus actually on the tree. Now, yes, um, deer don't spray up in the trees. They don't know that, you know what I mean? I've just over the years found that I get more success and more luck faster and get that curiosity going if you actually put a little something in the tree. So we're set up in the plot. Like I said, we're right in between a tree stand and a ground blind location. So actually, if you turn the camera that way, so you can actually see where we've got the grizzly blind over there. And then same thing over here through these trees. There's actually an XOP double set over there in the opening. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Exodus camera over here actually. I'm just now going to turn this a little bit and position that where it is facing directly on that mock scrape. And we're good to go. We actually moved a trail camera over to this rope. Um, we'll call this the Don Higgins rope. I learned about it through Don and a few other people, but I actually got to walk one of Don's farms with him and I kept seeing these ropes hanging. Uh, so I thought I'd go ahead and give it a shot. This is actually a place where typically uh, there has been a scrape in the past, but there wasn't one last year. And a lot of these branches just got so low. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and trimmed it back up, got it back to that height that I like it, and it seems like they like it, and hung an old rope here. And this rope's been hanging out here for about a year. So we've got a trail camera set up on this tree, but you can see all these weeds. This is gonna give us a ton of false triggers. So I'm actually just using uh, one of the wicked um, tough, actually the beast saw, and I'm gonna kinda of use it like a machete and just trim all these weeds down to try to eliminate any false triggers. Definitely, definitely recommend it every time you have a new trail camera set up. Get that stuff cleared out of your way. So that should basically, that should knock down a lot of our false triggers. Shooting down here. Like I said, this camera's kind of tucked in out of the way as well. This is also an entrance of this food plot, so um, we're really, really hoping we'll get a lot of coming and going and get some stuff in here. Just gonna kind of finish out, clearing out the bottom of this and really make it look like something's been in here working it and pawing at it. Alright, so we're back actually, um, we're actually not too terribly far from where we just were on the food plot. There's an ag field of corn in between us right now. We're on another field edge. Now, way over here, that's actually a tree stand that my buddy Billy C and I hunted out of. Tyler Flynn and I found the area and then Billy and I got into this, into this spot and we actually were able to pull something off pretty cool back in 2018. Johnny's running right in. You see him?
Meh. Smoked him. And my youngest son, Kyler, this is the first, uh, first track job, first recovery he's ever been on. Pretty awesome. Here, go. Hey. Uh, oh, if I hold your flashlight, then you can get him? All right. Here, how about you get on one side, I'll get on the other side. But where the buck came from was right where I'm standing. He came up out of this corner, uh, this inside corner of this timber, and was going to just follow it on around and head north, and we were able to grunt at him, and we called him all the way over there and ultimately were able to get a shot. Now last season, I was hunting out of the same tree and I saw a really good buck pop out of this corner. Now, I may not be the smartest guy in the world, but by God, year three, I did something about it. And Billy and I, we actually came over here about a month ago and we hung a set just inside the timber. So what John and I are gonna do today is we've got another scrape stick set up that we're gonna put on this edge right here now we'll be able to cut a little bit of a pocket and we might end up with a shooting lane, but if nothing else, we're gonna have a little bit of a, a peep hole to see them work in this scrape. In theory, if they come across to this scrape, they're probably going to go this way, that way, or that way. Either way, I'll be able to get a shot from a tree stand that's over here. If they come across the field to this scrape, they're gonna come right in front of me and get a shot. The only way it's not gonna work out is if they come from the north to the scrape, turn around, and then they just leave and go back the direction they came, which is not that normal. Typically when bucks are working scrapes, they're working an edge or they're working a row or something like that. So we're hoping that that's how it plays out this year. So here it goes. is hard as a rock right now. All right. All right, so got another scrape stick. We'll loosen this one up. Slide that in place. Now we can tighten this down. Okay. Now what we need to do is got to go fetch, it's a, fetch a branch. That actually might be a pretty good one right there. Shove it in there. Gonna go with the cedar on this one this time. Same deal, we're gonna loosen this one up. This one's got a little bit of a curve to it. So, actually, I'm gonna spin that one a little bit. Tighten that down. I might actually tilt this one up a little bit. Okay. All right, we've got us a branch up. Now we'll start making our mock scrape right here on the ground. Add a little bit more up top on this cedar. We've got obviously a ton of different branches that we can pull from and we can keep that one fresh. But get a camera set up now. All right, so we've actually, we've got a stick and pick set up. And what I did is I just did an add a bracket on here and put it in here in place. Um, it's on here loose, I don't have it tightened down yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got this thing turned on, disc formatted. I'll close it up and I'll go ahead and get this plugged in for right now. 
All right, so this should be on and it'll be taking photos. This is a pre-charged SP18 solar panel from Exodus. So I'm gonna set this one in place. I have this one facing this new scrape. All right, that, that one is in locked in. Now with our solar panel, I know that I've got sun that's gonna to continue to set this way. So I know that if I capture morning sun or I capture afternoon sun, it doesn't matter. Morning sun's gonna be over here. I can't do it because of the trees. So I'm just gonna rely on capturing that afternoon sun. So I've got this angled to grab that. I'm gonna tilt it to get a little bit more. Now, just because I wanna to try to get rid of some of my cord, I'm gonna bring this up and get it up off the ground just a little bit. Now, there we go. Angle toward our scrape, catching sun, not a single battery in here. We're good to go.